Take off my flag asking how gangster I was, nigga. You lucky on that day I was acting cool, cuz. I told you I ain't got time for that, but nigga. No, so I yeah, did. No, no, I was, no, I was saying how um, I could hear him um, all the way upstairs, and that's funny to me. Peace, everybody. Uh, good to be back from the Hood Mystic, representing www.hoodmystic.com. Uh, <laughs> Take a deep breath, kind of get into the moment, uh, reacclimate, reacclimate myself to the journey and I'm um, doing this, these daily energy readings because I was on a little vacation with my family. First time maybe in, let's see, Azora was born, probably first time in six years. I just stopped working <laughs> for an elongated period and just kind of release myself from obligations of any sorts and just immerse myself in my wife and my children. And uh, getting some very powerful channels on who I am and where I'm going forward in my spiritual mission. So a lot of my past lives have been in full view, like I can see them and I'm connecting dots, undocumented sources, pathways that I've been taking. Well, let me not be so abstract. It's this uh, particular energy of Tecumza, a Native American tribal chief and real quick, cause I don't wanna like bore y'all and get into so much of the channel, but basically earlier this year, I went to Maryland and uh, pay homage to the Susquehanna River. 
And then I was getting a lot of information. Like when you go there, it's very historic. So they speak of the War of 1812. And the War of 1812 happened in Maryland, but it didn't also happen like in Detroit area and uh, Canada as well. So I did that, went to Maryland, spiritual journey. I talked about it when I when it happened, but came back home. And then we went on this trip just recently to Detroit. And so that war of 1812 came back up again by like the purest chance of stroke of luck. Me and my wife decided to take another route up to Detroit and we passed through the town of Worthington and passing through the town of Worthington, we seen a Masonic museum and that we started like, you know, generally I'm driving and she's like having the phone. So I'm like, look up this, talk about this or whatever. So we start looking up Thomas Worthington and that brought up Tecumseh. Now I'm familiar with the story. I'm familiar with the energy. But it re-triggered it. And the mere fact that we were going to Detroit, a place that took. So Tecumseh was born in Ohio, right? And he traveled all over the Mississippi, all over. He represented every Indian on the continent, so to speak. He was the last stand against the Europeans. So we're talking 1812 and we're talking, and this was all happening July 4th weekend too, by the way. Uh, so he was the last stand against European imperialism. And he was from Ohio, right? I'm from Ohio. And part of his journey was in Detroit. Fort Detroit is what they call it. And now, I have dreams almost every night of ancient Detroit. My wife is from Detroit. The only type of music that I listen to really is Detroit type music, whether it's Motown, Slum Village, you know, Molly Brazy. Like, you know, I feel like I'm from Detroit. My wife's from Detroit. Like, you know, we go to Detroit a lot. Why though, you know, and I got a whole grand point but i just kind of want to catch up let y'all know where i'm at mentally so as we move forward with this i don't want people to be confused about me and where i'm at because this could be some bad shit crazy shit to you or it could give you a lot of clarification to where you're at today so we're in detroit Tecumseh. Tecumseh has a foothold. He 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 conquered Detroit at a specific time. And so the War of 1812 is where Tecumseh died or transitioned. So like any spirit, any soul, it doesn't die, right? It it keeps it keeps resurfacing on this planet. The fight against imperialism, the, the fight against invasion, right? The fight against stripping a whole people away from their land and then telling them that they're from somewhere else. But the thing of spirit and soul, you can't lie to it. So in my being as i'm emptying my cup and i'm doing all of the work i'm removing the the glamour so to speak and you know all of the things that we've talked about up until this point is bringing me to this realization of particular energy that is present within my experience within my journey and i've been spiritual like the conversations between me and my wife like you know of the different things that could have happened like we were supposed to go to Atlanta the weekend that we went to Maryland but something happened you know beyond our control that we did not go to Atlanta so we went to Maryland and the different times we took lefts when we should have took rights and all of these things 
really boiled down to a spiritually soul led life amongst other things right i could go on and 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 on about how i have no control over my life that by devoting myself to myself it is bringing me somewhere that i didn't necessarily know that i was gonna be at and so uh as the energy of takumza rises in me and the fight becomes clear that i know not of who i am and so the first thing that i must do is find out me right so much of my perception so much of my dedication so much of my goals and ambitions have been based upon the ego so if that is true then from there i take those fantasies and bring them into my emotional world and i i'm only going to talk about me today because I could talk about you, but I don't really know where you're at in this journey. So hopefully through me asking these questions and my realization, you could figure out how it makes sense to you or it doesn't make sense to you because I feel like so much at a crossroads that it's always a point of cutting down. It's always a point of releasing. It's always a point of refining. To get to a point of perfection that represents the soul. And within the soul, there is no particular question or objection. It's purely resonation. It's purely spiritual love. Because within me and the thing that I want to give is purely spiritual and there is no boundaries. But I understand how, you know, people want to put big rocks into your flow. You know, they want to stop the flow or obstruct or disrupt the, fl the flow by questions. And a lot of those questions are based upon me telling you what you need to do or what you shouldn't do. And honestly, that's no one's place. So. really formulate in the dialogue with yourself is really benefiting me <laughs> basically uh and so this brings me to mercury retrograde right you know i've been i've been you know just peeping the scene man i've just been like watching youtube videos all day and like researching stuff on the net like i just been really chilling like super chill like just watching it like you know if it's like usually i see a two-hour youtube video and i'm like i don't really have time for that investment over these past couple of days i just been really you know soaking it up and really directing my energy and just kind of just listening to stuff and just observing stuff and y'all really don't know what the fuck's happening with my career. <laughs> Mercury retrograde is like a great big enigma to people. They know it's happening, right? It's kind of like the rain or something. Like you can see the rain, you can feel the rain, but what exactly is the rain? So till you know, you understand evaporation and H2O and science class and they kind of explain it, then you get more of a understanding of what rain is. So. Hopefully, you know, with this content, it's something like the soul news or spiritual news where it's really live. We really hear we really in this moment and maybe two weeks from now, this information won't be as pertinent as it is today. The same way as a story that breaks now, like Kawhi Leonard is joined to the Clippers. Now, if I tell you Kawhi Leonard joined to the Clippers two months ago, like two months from now, you know, some people are going to be surprised, like, oh, really? And then certain people are going to be like, bro, why is you telling me this right now? Like, I've been knew that. So basically, is spirituality and soul news is more about being in the moment really understanding the moment and then moving forward with those moments and, and these understandings bring upon, you know, building blocks and foundations for us to grow into this spirituality. Because 
what we've been taught about spirituality is that it's a it's an aesthetic, right? It is something that looks a certain way, feels a certain way, behaves a certain way. It it it, it is something that you can clearly see, right? Because you see my turban, that means that I'm clearly spiritual, right? I can't be, you know, a bullshitter or, you know, I couldn't cheat on you, right? Because I got a turban on or I got on, you know, a suit, like, you know, all of these different spiritual uniforms that people wear. Uh, but as we really develop spirituality within ourselves, it could look however the fuck we want it to look like, you know, it doesn't have to look like anything because it is my personal journey. It is my personal walk and wherever I dressed or however I appear or whatever you think of me as, or, you know, whatever, you know, is nothing that a person can say to you that can take you outside of your spiritual journey because you, the understanding of you is a, is a, is a, is a profound experience so long story short mercury retrograde mercury is you as a sperm and you today like we all are sperm like once you get into that it's a it's a meme going around uh ever since mercury went retrograde i've been seeing it and it's like uh being a parent is really just like keeping a keep and come as a pet and it's funny but it's really true because that's literally all we are it's like small piece of cum that uh enters into an egg grows up you know still that cum still that sperm cell but it's just growing so the interesting thing about this sperm cell is that for the first four or five years it operates completely on a different like level like <laughs> like it's different like it don't need nothing or nobody really you know maybe me and my mom me and their mother we feed the children but they're completely autonomous like they don't need us to enjoy themselves or nothing like they just are in a whole nother space especially the little one so the older you get the more that mercury kind of leaves from you you kind of forget uh how did i learn how to crawl how did i learn how to walk how did i learn how to talk how did i learn how to jump run all of these vital things that we learned at such a young age that can't really be taught to us the most critical things that we possess as human beings the capacity to think that can't be really taught to us we kind of either have it or don't like you might be really talented in something that you never been taught how to draw you just naturally knew how to draw you naturally knew how to play the piano you naturally knew how to have sex you naturally knew how to dance nobody could kind of teach you it you just came down here with it you could just sing good you know that's mercury so mercury retrograde simply is you coming in contact with that energy mercurial force that has motivated you that has pushed you through life where you thinking that your mama daddy your thought process your emotional your good looks you know all of these things have sustained you through life but really none of that has that's all illusion that's all glamour uh the real shit is you being this little tiny piece of sperm that just so happened out of a million right maybe a trillion sperm in your father's lifetime your little ass managed to creep through the fog you know like snoop doggy dog you know what i'm saying up into somebody's egg and been fermented and grown and now we sitting here chopping it up on youtube mercury retrograde I do this i've done this all the time and maybe even before i studied astrology I would be 12 years old like you know just in the middle of class the teacher would be talking about william henry harrison you know civil war and i'd be like what the fuck am i doing here right now like you know, like right now how did i get here like 
and I would just sit there like I've always done that and I guess mercury goes retrograde two to three times a year so I'm a mercurial spirit like I'm I don't give a real real fuck really I've never that's the thing about me like I've never really gave a fuck <laughs> I just always kind of knew that things was going to work out in my favor even when I was down and out some might call it arrogance or confidence or uh, a believer, you know, whatever. But I just kind of just knew that things was going to work out in my favor. So therefore, I never got too, too down. So as we discuss this, <laughs> so much to talk about. Um, and I don't even think I have even got to the title of the video yet. But that's because there's so much to talk about. And mind you, I haven't been here for like five or six days so y'all just gonna have to give me um <laughs> give me a second yeah we are all miracles and so to mercury retrograde is you really sitting in that space like damn son like i really couldn't be here like it was so many different things for me not to be here since birth like how 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 if you saw if you thought about how you got to the point that you are to this moment you need about 21 days to factor that shit like you can't even think about that shit in one hour in one moment like so many things have like if you're not journaling if you're not processing if you're not really taking note of your experience then i've really like that's your problem <laughs> you know what i'm saying that's that's really the issue because there's so much to get into there's so much to explore and when we want to explore we want to explore the inner depths within ourselves because the inner depths represent that spiritual perfection that rests within us all okay Everybody has a soul. And if you don't have a soul, you can develop one. And if you're listening to this channel, 22 minutes, 22 seconds in, you have a soul. And if you're not, you really trying to, even if you got, even if you listen into this video with the most sinister intentions, my energy is persuading you and dispelling all of that negative energy. So even I bring on the haters. I bring on the serpents. I bring on the snakes because I'm the goddamn original snake charmer. You feel me? So it don't really. I came from that. I like this is the hood mystic. You understand? Like everything that was in the bottom was my stew. And rising out of that stew, like I became a voice for good and a voice for the soul because I've experience everything that the ego like i've been shown riches i've been shown success i've been shown sex i've been shown multiple partners i've been shown pleasure i've been shown traveling i've been shown tourists i've been shown cruises i've been shown ocean fronts i've been shown lakeside i've been shown you know riverfront i've been shown cliffside i've been shown all of this and none of it means anything is is nothing i'm more concerned about this inner thing why am i in maryland right now giving offerings to the susquehanna river my nigga like i don't even understand that shit why am i why am I dealing with these Native American earthwork mounds? And so if, if if I ever have any questions, I have plenty of resources. When I deal with Tecumseh, him being a Shawnee Indian, and I was a I was a chlorine delivery driver for this company and all of these different spots that I would go and deliver chlorine, all of these obscure Ohio ass towns <laughs> where they ain't never seen a black person in the past 20 years. Why would anybody go there like me? 
Why? It ain't nothing there but a goddamn pool that need chlorine. And lo and behold, my ass is there. What is this Native American mound, though? I'm really interested. And why is every goddamn spot that I go to deliver chlorine is a damn Native American mound next to it? Hmm. I got so many questions. So when it comes, like, I've done a, a, a meditation for learning my soul name. A uh, long time ago, I was on the bus. I just had moved to Columbus and Miss Blue on the remix radio. She had a, a meditation for what is your soul's name? And I was on the bus and I was down and out, man. Down and out, super down. But that meditation, it was like, this is why I got like the diamond in the background and all of that, because she had us climbing up a mountain. And at the top of the mountain, it was this diamond tip. And she said, knock open the tip. And when you open up the tip, you'll see a piece of paper, open up that piece of paper and you'll read your soul name and never share it with anybody. But this is your name. This is your true name name and i was like doing that meditation opening up that and <laughs> seeing that name right and then having to drive around and seeing that name constantly all of it being of native american origin and their actual struggle of being in this country and dealing with an invasion from people and these people delivering diseases, disrupting their farming, disrupting everything about their normal way of life. Without never, 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 never with the plans or hopes of cohabitating or learning, just pure invasion, takeover, murder, pillage. This is mine now, and you no longer live here. And then the descendants to have to live without the knowledge of what's happening and them having to acquiesce to a society of a people who have murdered their ancestors, but don't tell them they murdered their ancestors. No, they tell you that you from Africa and you've been sent over here from Africa. And, and there is no even way possible that there are 40 million melanated people descended from 350,000. And even though, and even if that was the case, there was race mixing that took place between the Africans and the Native Americans. So as that blood mixes and intermingles, you can't suppress the blood that's native in your veins and you being on this native land. I'm so sorry to tell you. And and as much as you will try to step away from it, move from it, it don't matter. It don't it don't bother me. You gonna face, <laughs> you have to face what yes, space and time represents. And now I realize that this, this transmission goes all over the country. I mean, all over the planet. So native blood is not something that is American. This is English. This is Irish. This is Chinese. This is India, Eastern India, Western India, right? There is not a place. Well, there are places. This is this is American, South American, North American. Your connection to the earth has been disrupted. So now. As we come to. The veil being lifted. You might be caught up in some personal and people pleasing and trying to figure out what such and such is doing, how such and such is, is them feeling. And so that's why Mercury being retrograde at the 10th degree mark of cancer, it represents abundance. You have to really select what type of abundance you're trying to bring into your reality because abundance is just a pure adjective. You can have abundance of stress. You can have abundance of problems. You can have abundance of fears. You can have abundance of anything. So as Mercury, you know, Mercury is 
backtracking. So all of the things that we've destruct discuss in Mercury over this past three weeks will be rediscussing and then it'll go back in <laughs> direct and we'll rediscuss it again just to make sure that once we get back to this point where we're at now where it goes retrograde at what's your soul name you'll be damn sh for sure certain about your soul's name your soul's attention where's your soul leading you what kind of food your soul likes where your soul likes to go out for dinner how your soul likes to dance you'll be well acclimated with your soul by the time we get to this point <laughs> shit a month and a half from now so we got a lot of time uh, good that Mercury moves fast, but even though there's a lot of backtracking, retracking, understanding, re-understanding, this is a big question. This is a big question that the emotional turmoil and the emotional toil that I had to get to come to this space today. Whew. Whew. When you talk about the feels of releasing and trauma, rising up, being in family settings, my damn mama talking about it ain't right. <laughs> I mean, everything tried to get your boy. And I'm like, all right, I ain't doing nothing. Vacation, spiritual channel. I don't want no disruptions. I want to be in this space and time. So I was in Detroit in 2019, but I was also in Detroit in around the 1800s as well. I immersed myself with Native American drum music. I was listening to podcasts. I was reading audio books. So I would have the Native American and I would just lay down, close my eyes, and I would just be there and feel it and understand it and get it. Okay. Okay. Wow. So you, damn. They was just taking people land. <laughs> They was reclassifying you. They was taking you from your native status into Negro color status through U.S. census. And you ain't even your parents didn't even have to take a census or not take a census. They was going to take a census for you. Wow. Damn. So you mean to tell me millions of people don't even know where they come from, their ancestral lineage because they just black? You know, all of this, having to feel all of this and then having to release it because you still dealing with a Mercury retrograde that's going to give you all of the feels that you want, whether it be good or bad. Abundance is an adjective is not it, if I say abundance. Well, at least for me, abundance feels like, oh, a lot of money. But in reality, I could have an abundance of bills, you know, abundance of turmoil. So really stepping out of that and releasing and figuring out what I want an abundance of. And honestly, I set up a lot of different things. We went on a lot of like spiritual witchy halls when we was in Detroit and got a lot of candles and got shit to set up. But I don't even really know what I want right now. You got the, I had the same expedite candle and I was really excited. Cause I was like, man, this shit is about to bring something real fast in my, and I was like, I don't know what I want to come fast. <laughs> like, I just keep it, you know, in the tuck just in case when I want something, I guess I can use it. But right now I don't really want to know what I want until I can figure out what's absolutely beneficial for me. Uh, so I'm just really in a state of processing, honestly, because I'm telling you the channels and the transformation was, it was like, as much as I didn't necessarily want to be in the place that I was, the channel was so strong that I could have been in goddamn projects, you know, with hood rats, you know, uh, I could have been anywhere, you know, just, just, just sleeping on that linoleum floor. You know how like it ain't no carpet in the projects. It's like that hard ass floor. Like I could have been sleeping on that. And the spiritual channel was just so strong. That 
it space and time did not matter because I knew I was in Detroit and I would love to dream because the house would disappear, the street would disappear, the backyard would disappear, everything would disappear, and I would just be on native Detroit with all of the mounds, and it was mounds on top of mounds, and it was just beautiful, and I was there. And it didn't matter about nothing else. You know what I'm saying? To have that connection to spirit, to be that interwoven. And and like, I know my story ain't everybody's story, but I'm saying like, you need to be where your story is at. Don't be studying about Ireland, right? All day, every day, you know, thinking that you're a fairy princess or some shit from Ireland and your ass in Brooklyn or your ass in goddamn New New Hampshire or, you know, Texas. But you can't get enough of Ireland. If you don't get your ass on a plane, boat, and, and get you a goddamn apartment in Ireland and go the fuck home, like, don't be talking about anime, Japan, you know, all this shit. Like, I don't have no connection with those places. My connection is right here. I'm in this space and time, and I have the resources to get to where I need to get to to really connect with my ancestral thing. You know, I'm in Ohio. I need to be in Ohio. Ohio is where I still got more discovering. So I got a lot to talk about, too. I just realized that. So I don't necessarily know tomorrow. I guess I have to come back tomorrow because I'm, what? Well, I haven't been talking that long. But how y'all feeling, man? How y'all feeling? How's everything? How's everything? <laughs> nah, I'm not in the kingdom. I'm in United States. Uh, I I do, I do plan to come to Ireland at a certain point in time. Uh, very soon. Uh, feel a real strong connection to there. But other than that, and that's just based upon the mounds and the moors and the things like that. But. And I know that I have ancestry lineage, like, in Ireland. So, <laughs> everything makes sense. It's all connecting, even in this moment, as I'm connecting dots. So, you know, that's basically what's happening, connecting these dots. And so, real quick. So, Mercury conjunct Mars. Let's just look at this real quick and deal with the astrology of it. So Mercury conjunct Mars going into the second deacon of Cancer, squaring the moon, going into the second deacon of Libra, opposing Uranus and squaring Uranus is Mercury and Mars at the second deacon of Aries. So moon going into the second deacon of Libra is bringing a strain on our relationship. The card that rules the second deacon of Libra is the three of swords the three of swords is titled heartbreak and the rider weight deck is the heart with the three swords going through it it represents heartbreak is ruled by saturn and it simply means that relationships must end and heartbreak is just some. Um, you watch too much movies you don't really know how to process heartbreak you really codependent you really don't know how to let go like you don't like you know what i'm saying like at a certain point so another point that mercury going into the second deacon of cancer speaks to is how to utilize humor to bring about getting over shit so therefore if you have a relationship you have an ideal like oh i wanted to be with jimmy forever and but jimmy don't like me jimmy like thoughts and i'm not a thought I, I can't be treated like a thought so therefore that's really funny like jimmy really like thoughts out here like he gonna not be with you and go sleep on somebody's air matches <laughs> you know that got a hole in it and you got a king size bed if you can't find the humor in that shit you know what i'm saying if you can't understand you know how stupid these people be then you gonna really sit in that second deacon of libra like you know turn on the tony braxton unbreak my heart looking boy like <sighs> hey <laughs> it's funny it's funny. So this is this is a square though. Me saying it's funny and you seeing that is funny. 
don't mean you're going to laugh about it, but you have to figure out how you're going to laugh about it. Because if you can laugh about it, then you can let it go. If you can't laugh about it, then you really can't let it go. Now, imagine you realizing that, okay, I really need to let that go, but it really hurt me still. All right. You stuck in that space. So therefore, squares and T squares, they really tricky because they either put you in a box or you really get over it, you know? So Uranus on the other side is ruled by the three of wands, which speaks to virtue in the Rider weight deck is a man with the three swords he's looking forward it wants to awaken this power it wants you to move forward it wants you to migrate it wants you to seek and find it wants you to align with a cosmic order so a cosmic order is something that your spirit or your soul dictates or really says like okay you need to be on YouTube talking about astrology, Kyrie. Well, society says that I need to work a 40 hour job. So you just don't understand how society work. And my soul is like, you need to be on YouTube focusing on your work in your astrology and your spirituality and your psychology. You need to travel. You need to be free. You need to be with your family. You need to make more love to your wife. You need to spend more time with your sons. You do not need to be at a job 40 hours a week. Listen, so you don't know how it work out here. Let me do me. I'm a work and do YouTube. How about that? You're not going to be happy, Kyrie. You're going to be sad. You're, you're, you're going to be stressed out. You're going to bring all of this negativity back home that you pick up from the call center and you're just going to be upset. And so that's how this shit worked out. Right. And so <laughs> at a certain point, I had to acquiesce, buckle down, deal with the soul, make the hard decision, walk into work on a Sunday and just leave my laptop there, leave my security passes there, you know, and say I can't come back. And, you know, I'm going to just kind of work and like work on my website. Focus. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> it's funny. And so it's easy for me to get over that shit, like to laugh about it, man. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's really it's really funny, man. Yeah, exactly. Like <laughs> it's 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 like it's is is mind blowing for real. Like so you know in your heart of hearts, you know in your deepest of depths of what you should do. Your social your social upbringing, your mom, dad, school, friends, it exists in a space your soul cosmic order exists in a whole different space. You following that, you know, maybe you might have to sleep on some linoleum floors from time to time. Maybe you might sleep on an air mattress that having a hole in it from time to time, but you'll get that king size mattress. You understand? If you want one girl on that king size mattress, you want one girl one boy <laughs> you understand you want two girls three girls three girls one however however many people you can fit on your king size you can put on there but you got to start at the ground level you got to work from the inside out and so the first thing that you do when you meet a person you like a person what do you say at least this is what I say. What's your name? I got a reading, not even a reading. This girl read me and I'm talking to her. And I, and I said, what's your name? What's your name? She was so familiar and so powerful. But that's where I got this concept from. 
from talking to her when we went to buy our candles we went to buy some candles and the lady that worked there she read our energy and she read that shit she read that shit like a book you know but my first question was what's your name and so when we deal with our heart center when we deal with our soul we want to make it us right but maybe it's not us maybe it has a whole different nature or name and then we want to have a relationship with our soul we want to denote it denote just means to mark off or to separate to identify to reacquaint to really establish a relationship with something abstract to us when we're referencing the soul we're represent we're referencing a substantial entity that has not been named once you name the soul it is no longer the soul it is now that name and that attributed perfection invincibility invincibility limitlessness that is associated with all things soul and so about this process and about this understanding it's a purely seek and you shall find process once you say i want to know my soul's name then your soul's name will be revealed to you. The reason why you may or may not know your soul is because you haven't asked those questions because you've been so concerned about what your baby daddy doing, what your baby mama ain't doing, what your mama didn't give you, why your daddy wasn't home. Oh, my boyfriend cheated. Oh, my girlfriend got a train ran on her while I was at work. Hey, all of those situations are hilarious to me. You got to be in that space because you got to be in that space to laugh about it, to be able to let it go. And and to let it go means that you deal with. See, when you deal with the soul, all of these things never even fucking happen. See, I've been dealing with the soul. It's funny, like that shit hilarious to me if my wife cheat, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, as that's not even going to hurt me no more. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, okay, I see you. All right. <laughs> you know, it become a game or something like, all right, now it's my turn. <laughs> you know, whatever. Like, it's just got to be something where you just completely loose and you completely free with this energy. You got to have a, your mind got to be so open that your your soul's path is so so clear to you because your soul's path is full with different options different ways you got a selection of things you got you know it ain't just like you know what was me is hard out here and i done been through so much <laughs> you know how it is for us <laughs> we done struggled so hard we done struggled you see the three of swords she just sitting there struggling looking so like you know you could tell they just got finished having sex and he had to leave or something you know <laughs> you gotta laugh at the shit you know you gotta figure out what's funny about it why do you laugh about it because the perfection of the soul is so powerful that since you didn't deal with it, you've opened yourself up to all types of bullshit. But once you deal with the soul, none of that shit happened. So the mere fact that negative things did happen to you is as a result of you not actually dealing with your soul the way that you kind of circumvent it without having to go through every single uh class or every kind of event any type of social thing that you need to do to heal to get over to reprocess to get into a grief circle all of this shit right 
if y'all don't learn to laugh about this shit, then y'all just gonna sit there and have pity power pity parties all the time. Oh my god. Can you believe what these people is doing to us? They is murdering us. They is they is they is oh 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 oh, oh. you know all damn day all damn day and so how to get out of this space how to get out of this paradigm really simply is to have an open mind don't know shit see the problem with people is that they know every fucking thing and then knowing everything is the block since you know everything you know everything that you need to do therefore you have personal goals it's a block because the soul is like you a dumbass. You don't know. You ain't even acclimated with me. You don't even know me. You don't even know my name, my nigger. You don't even know my name. You don't even know. Hey. Do, 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 do. Baby, baby, baby. Yeah, you need to run that Alicia Keys one time. You don't even know your soul's name. Or you do. I didn't. You know. So how you going to know what you supposed to do? How you going to know what your life going to be? And you don't even know your soul's name or your soul's intent. You've never even sat with the question because you've always identified yourself with the soul. So when it comes to love, you're like, we talked about all of this. We've abstracted all of this. Love yourself, know yourself, be yourself. Who are you? Lisa? No, Lisa? Lisa? No. We already know Lisa. You already love Lisa. You we see Lisa all the time. What we're what we're attempting is to awaken reservoirs in our mind that have not been dealt with through meditation through traveling, through ritual. We wanna see and align with the spaces and times. You know what the city does to you? The city takes you out of your birthright, son. You think the world is the city? Think how crazy that is once you exit out the city and then you drive for miles and miles to another city. Man, if you don't stop here and there and get acquainted with in between these places that you going, why is you just driving past and driving through shit? Like, man, the mind control is very, very deep because a city is an invention. Mind you, the whole country is just land. <laughs> right it's just state parks it's just like native american burial miles it's rivers it's beaches it's all types of shit but you just trying to like not deal with it you want to deal with what's known and so the three of wands is really like not dealing with what's known it's really dealing with the unknown he's like going forward into the journey into the void and this, and this is like very, very easy to go and align with this three of wands energy. We learn to laugh about our pain and we move forward, not through our pain, but we move forward through our spiritual cognition. Once your spirit says, oh yes, you can do this or, oh yes, you need to do that. Follow it, man. Follow it. Y'all know me, I like to talk, so be sure to visit www.hoodmystic.com. I do have like a little two paragraph overview of what I did just talk about uh, over this past hour. Um, and I'm just now getting started. Mind you, I could have talked to y'all for about four hours today, but me and my wife, we really develop in our time management. That's something that we're going to really 
focus on moving forward, developing our time management and our growth through business and profit margins and things like that. And just try to empower our lives the right way, starting from ground zero and really planning, replanning, refining. Uh, our goal is to become a diamond. And there was a lot of pressure. And a lot of refining and a lot of we're going to try this and that ain't work. We're going to try something else and, you know, just keep cutting and keep refining and because we know that the soul is perfect because what the soul has shown us thus far has been nothing but perfection, nothing but perfection. That's all the soul has shown us. And we put our own little mind on it <laughs> and be stressed out about it. You know, we can do that, but we have so much to be thankful for that. I can't even find a space to complain at this time. Man. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, so I just wanted to really get that energy out and really try to get all of what I've been going through within an hour over these past five days. I did get back on Patreon. I did answer those. So if you did put a Patreon request for a moon sign reading, I've answered all of those. And if you aren't a Patreon member for as little as a dollar a month, what you do is you simultaneously support my content. And I do give back to the Patreon members with the monthly moon sign reading is set up through various tiers though as well. Um, if you are a $10 subscriber or a $5 subscriber and you've paid more than one time and I haven't sent you a t-shirt or I haven't sent you a cash band, please email me at hoodmystic at gmail.com. Like, bruh, send me my shit. Run me mines. And so I'll send you those shirts out. Uh, hoodmystic at gmail.com. Hoodmystic at just hoodmystic.com. <laughs> That's the website. Uh, have you talked to Spirit Box Kali about the butterfly boxes? No. Oh, okay. Okay. So just scratch all of that. What I just said. Uh, I didn't say nothing at all. Uh, but what you can do is go on Instagram right now because this video is over. Follow at Cali underscore Ife, um, buy something for you, buy something for your girl, get her something real nice and conscious, you know, Hey, you know, get some energy into what you buy your girl. You understand you buy something very expensive with no real intention. You know, you can turn these crystal studs, you can program these crystal studs and you know, love me forever earrings. You feel me? <laughs> But, you know, reach out to her, you know, support her, support us, and we'll support each other as we move forward. Appreciate you guys for listening, and I'll be back tomorrow. Peace.